Pamela Mertz. I am a member of the board of directors for the National Stuttering Asso Asso Association and one of the visionaries and leaders behind the NSA's pro pro program, We Stutter at Work, um, which is what is bringing you today's web webinar. Um, I have a very esteemed co-presenter with with me. Um, Charlie, please introduce yourself. Thanks, Pam. Hi, folks. Uh, my name is Charlie Adams. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I am a speech language pathologist, and I am on uh, faculty at the University of South Carolina. And um, I serve on the board of the National Stuttering Association um, with Pam. And um, I've also been involved in the We Stutter at Work campaign, and um, Pam and I have presented on covert stuttering a couple of times, so I'm very excited to get to do that again. Okay, so sorry for the little tech, technical glitches there. I'm just making sure that uh, the, the screen, the slides are up, and it's also still recording. Um, so, uh, Take it away, Char Char Charlie, with our uh, definition of what covert stuttering is. Okay, so um, from a clinical perspective, covert uh, stuttering starts with avoidance. Most people who stutter have some experience with avoidance. Um, you can think of covert stuttering as sort of extreme avoidance or avoidance on steroids. Um, back in the 50s, the term for this was interiorized stuttering. Um, basically, um, you learn to hide your stuttering, and that hiding is driven by um, experiences of social penalty, usually in childhood. Um, another description, another clinical description is passing as fluent. I think that's a, a nice way to think about it. Um, Jill Douglas has a really nice definition. Um, her definition is that people who covertly stutter experience the cognitive and the emotional elements of stuttering without the behavioral elements, or at least without the overt behavioral elements of stuttering. All right, go ahead, Pam. That's that is that is a really important definition, and uh, yeah, shout out to Jill. I don't know if she's on here yet, but yes, yeah, she's done a lot of work in covert stuttering. So the lived experience is something that I am very famil familiar with and that I can share. I was a covert stutterer for more than 30, 30, 35 years. No one in my world knew that I, that I stuttered, including um, the partner that I had for 20 years. Um, I had hit it so well that there was very, very little, little doubt that, that, that I, um, was fluent. And I went to great lengths to, uh, hide, hide, hide my stuttering at all costs. As Charlie mentioned, my preferred tactic was avoidance. Um, if I could not use one of the tricks or tools that I'm sure everybody who stut stutters um, had, I would I would choose not to speak because if I didn't stutter, I mean if I didn't talk, I didn't stutter. And my definition of success was tied into all 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 of that. I was successful when I pulled it off, when no one knew. It was a game with a very high emotional toll, but at the time, I felt the price to pay it pay it for it was very well worth worth that. Okay, Charlie's going to talk to us a little bit about why it's so 
appealing to somebody to be a co co a covert stutterer. So a lot of folks who stutter feel like stuttering is failure. And you, you just called attention to that, Pam. And if stuttering feels like failure, then um, the first time you manage not to stutter might feel like success hmm. um, through some trick or device that you've used. Um, and when it works, you want to try it again to hmm. see if it is consistent, see how durable it is. If it works the second time and the third time, eventually you're going to think, I might really be onto something here. <laughs> And then you want to test it in the situation where it would be most important, which would be when you meet somebody for the first time. If it works there, then you've got your disguise. You're all set. Yes. And then you feel like that victory, like, yes, I fooled you. You don't, you, you don't, don't know. And then therefore in the, the pulling it off, I feel that then there cannot be any judgment. And that is very often what people who stutter covertly, that is the reason why. They, they, they don't want to be judged by the many false assumptions that people who stutter have, that we are lacking in intel intelligence, we are lacking in emotional reg reg regulations, that we are nervous or shy. None of those things are true. But when you're stuttering, people falsely assume, assume some of those, those things. Um, so all is well until, uh-oh, it's not as cut and dry as I thought it was going to be. So can you speak to that, Charlie, the part where it's definitely not as cut and dry as we think? I can. So, for example, when you've met somebody and you've managed not to stutter through that greeting and that whole interaction, then if you your paths cross again, you're going to have to pull it off again because now this person doesn't think you stuttered. The first few People you managed not to stutter around probably already knew that you stuttered. But now that you have this new identity, you've got to maintain that every time you see those people again. So, um, so not stuttering is now priority one. Um, and because of that, you've got to start eliminating or mitigating the risk of stuttering. So how do you do that? Well, you start eliminating you start looking at those elements of risk. So you might quit answering the telephone. Uh, your socializing, social life may change. You may stop accepting invitations to parties or at least control which ones you participate in. And also, um, you're, you might even have decisions of which courses to take or even a, which career you might want to look into based on this new pattern of, of concealment um, that you're in. And at some point, you, after going through that process for a while, you have reinvented yourself as someone who is fluent, but maybe someone who is uh, a lot more of an introvert. Damn. Yeah, and because we're talking about, um, you know, dropping the C in covert for stuttering at work, many of the things that you just mentioned, Char, 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 Charlie, factor into avoidance and not speaking at work. So not volunteering at a staff meeting, not have, have, having the Monday morning water cooler talks about, you know, what you did over the, week weekend um so one of the 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 major costs especially for me when i was co co covert was that my personality was just completely hijacked i was so covert that i really was not what i like to call real pam my personality was not me i felt like a rope rope robot I, I felt like 
fake Pam. And for the longest time, and what the danger danger, um, is of that, for the longest time, I convinced myself that I, I, I was okay with fake Pam. And that was the far, farthest thing from the, from the truth. But I want it to be fluent or appear fluent so much that I believed that this was the better path. So what are some of the benefits of dropping that, that, that C and, um, you know, being, being open. Um, so bringing your whole self to work. When we conceal, we fail to contribute to the workplace fully and wholeheartedly. Being open about stuttering or about any of the other things that we might, we might, we might have. Being open le- lends to giving yourself permission to bring your whole, whole, whole self, self to work. Um, it, it then opens up more authentic relation, relation, relationships. And for me, that was one of the most important, important aspects. I want it to be more authentic because then I was, I was being true, um, to, to, to myself and letting real Pam be more in command as opposed to fake, fake, fake Pam. And let me just add that um, being more authentic in work leads to creativity, better team teamwork, innovation, and bottom line or productivity and bottom line. And that's what employers are looking for. They are looking for results. In many instances, that's revenue, that's money, that's bottom line. But I also want to just um, add that bringing your whole self to work is the entire premise behind effective diversity, equity, and inclusion pro- 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 programs that most workplaces either have already or are strive- striving to have. So when we reach that point, it's really easy to fold stuttering into those already existing DE and I programs at 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 work, but some of that has to come from reducing that stigma, right, Charlie? That's right. And I don't know um, if you all are familiar with um, imposter syndrome. Um, imposter syndrome is a, a fear that you're inadequate and will be exposed as a fraud and this is part of the mechanism that makes coming out with your stuttering difficult um, because it's really hard to get past the notion that real stuttering Pam is more authentic than fake fluent Pam right Mm -hmm. Um, so we can talk about stigma in terms of self stigma which is your own intolerance of your stuttering um, and we can, we also want to talk about reducing public stigma or social stigma, which is intolerance of your stuttering by society. And you're going to work on both of those things by coming out with your stuttering. And of course, this does lead to freedom. And this freedom is letting you to be free to stutter with the understanding that there's nothing wrong with stuttering. And because there's nothing wrong with stuttering, there should be no penalty for stuttering. And it's also free from the crippling fear that people who are covert have of being discovered. So once you have let the world know that you stutter, that fear goes away because now they know. Right. And, and, and just as, uh, as a, as a, as a piggyback to, to that, neither Charlie or I are suggesting that, um, Dropping the C and becoming open is something that can happen overnight. 
for some people, it may never ha happen, but this webinar and our insights and, 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 and thoughts, um, about being op open, um, are, are just that. We, this is not coming from any dictate that, 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 that this has to happen. Some people are very happy with being covert. If they can pull it off and it works for them, great. I'm just sharing my experience from my lived experience that it, that it wasn't work, working. And I just needed a pivot, um, event for, for me to realize that and to give myself permission. So how do we get out of here? How do, how do we, how do we get out of the rabbit hole that, 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 that we found, found, found ourselves in because we've chosen to be covert? Um, one of the, one of the ways, um, that I have found, and I think many as well have found, um, is we can use social media. Um, as a way to promote and adver adver advertise that, 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 that we stutter. Um, so <clears throat> Twitter, and I've shared with you my, uh, Twitter handle at stutter rockstar. That's what I've been known on Twitter for 10, 10, 10 years now. So it's, I think it's pretty obvious when you see the word stutter in, 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 in somebody's, um, name or handle. That it means that, that, that they, that, that they stutter. But you can also use, of course, Facebook, Instagram, and a, and a professional platform like LinkedIn is also a really good, good, good place to, um, make mention, um, that you stutter or join in one of the LinkedIn groups, um, that talk about, um, professionals who 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 stutter and um look at some of the diversity and inclusion um groups or uh pages on linked linkedin also another really great way and i want to give kudos to ian Mahler for sharing this suggestion uh quite a quite a few years ago Ian uses um, his e email signature as a way to advertise that he that 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 he stutters. Um, so he for, he writes his name Ian I I I I N I A N, um, and then actually uses the word um, stutter. And I think he says I stutter. What are you good at? In his email. Uh, signatures. I, I just think that's great. Um, you can also use perhaps more subtle ways of, um, advertising that you're stuttering by wearing your stuttering. So that might be you have a wristband. Um, Charlie might have his wristband on, right? Right. So you might have your stuttering wristband on and, and it's, it's a, it's a teal green because that's the color for stuttering. You might have posters in your off, off, office. Um, oh, he's show, he's showing up another one. You might have posters about people who stutter, stutter in your, in your office. You might have a coffee mug. That has something to do with stuttering, the National Stuttering Association. Um, you know, so those are all conversation starters, essentially, at, in the work, in the work, in the workplace. And another great way to get out of that rabbit hole is to get connected. And what I mean with that is search out and participate in in-person local chapter meetings when we're able to do that because we're not able to do too many things in person right right now but join in some of the many many virtual sessions that the nsa has been doing um i have a page for women who stutter our stories so i often will host a women's only Zoom or, you know, virtual ses session. 
Um, you can check out the International Stuttering um, Awareness Day online conference, which starts next week, where we have many contributions this year from people who stutter, people that are uh, researching stut stuttering, speech language patho patho pathologist, and there you get a whole smorgasbord of, of ways to learn about stuttering and connect. I would be remiss if I did not mention under getting connected, uh, Grace Gregory is on this web, web, webinar and she was one of the very first people and women that I met when I went to my first NSA local ch uh, chapter support, support, support meeting, um, some 14 years ago. Um, so just meeting other people, people who stutter helps you get out of that rabbit hole and helps you get out of that fake persona that, 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 that may have been created. So Charlie's going to talk a little bit. Um, about some of the other um, um, more concrete things that we might be able to do to get out of that rabbit hole. Okay, thanks, Pam. Um, this uh, comes off, I like going off of your get connected message because um, once you find others who stutter, then you're connected and you, you found your tribe and now you need to hang out with your tribe. Um, the easiest way to do that is with the local chapters of the NSA. Um, there are obviously the annual conference is a, is a life changing event. Um, so when you do that, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to hear more stuttering. And that's important. That's important because after years of being covert, you're not very tolerant of stuttering. And the more stuttering you hear, the more tolerant you become of stuttering in particular. And the more of your stuttering that you do, the more tolerant you become of your stuttering as well. And that's just as important. Podcasts are great. They're wonderful, wonderful podcasts for stuttering. Pam's is one of them. Um, so educate yourself about stuttering too. Um, there's a lot of things you don't know about it. There's a lot of good resources out there to learn more about stuttering. Um, and you, as you examine your stuttering, you really need to identify all of the mechanisms of avoidance that you've been employing over the years, because that becomes your roadmap for undoing all of that. Um, so that, that includes different situations. Um, that you avoid. It includes people that you habitually avoid. Um, it includes activities that you might have avoided a lot over the years. And over time, you're going to need to seek those things out so that you can become authentic and see what you've been missing, right? Um, disclosure is an important part of this. So since we're talking about stuttering in the workplace, Disclosure is going to be a little easier if you're starting a new job. Pam, you made reference to that earlier about um, those life changes being opportunities to sort of reinvent yourself. Mm -hmm. um, if you are not in transition, um, you need to think a little bit about how you're going to go about disclosing. And that's where allies come in. Allies are extremely important. Um, so. Um, you're going to start small. You want to disclose to a trusted friend. And at work, you want to disclose to a trusted coworker um, and let them know what's going on. Um, maybe they already knew that you stuttered. Maybe they don't, but they do now because you're just telling them. Mm -hmm. And you're going to recruit their assistance as you disclose to more and more people. Um, so. Once you have decided you're going to do this at work, you, you need to think about how you want to do that on a larger scale. You could, um, as Pam suggested, you could put something in your email signature. 
something in your work profile. Um, you may want to, in meetings, start reminding everybody that you stutter, maybe because they might have already suspected. Um, you know, in the in the meetings where you have to go around the table, we all know that experience. That can be very stressful for someone who stutters. Well, that's a great opportunity because uh, disclosure works even better if you stutter your way through the disclosure and show it to them. <laughs> all right. What's next, Pam? Well, I want to just uh, add a couple of thoughts to what you've what 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 we have on this slide. So, when we're talking about allies in the work work workplace, I think it's really important for you to consider an ally could be somebody who, if you're at a meeting together and um, you have not contributed, you've not, you've not, you've not shared, you've not, um, um, you know, volunteered, you might, that ally who knows that you stutter and who knows that you may feel a little uncomfortable or intimidated by sharing might be able to say something like, hey, we have, we have, we haven't heard from Pam yet. Pam, Pam, Pam has, um, some good ideas on, on, on that. That's, that is a good definition of an ally. Somebody at work who kind of has your back. And I also wanted to mention, um, Charlie under desensitization. I think that that is really important because when we talk about advertising our stuttering and maybe wearing it and having things in our office desensitize for me um, means and meant that I tried out voluntary stutter stuttering as a way of um, getting over that that fear of what would happen if I stuttered what 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 would happen if 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 I was exposed and I kind of like liken that to um if you um have a fear of heights climb a ladder if you're afraid of water you know take some swim lessons all of that desensitizes ourselves to the fear that we have of being exposed of either having a phobia about um, a place or a thing or, you know, having a phobia of we stutter and people are gonna, gonna, gonna um, make those false assumptions, assumptions about us. So I just wanted to just jump in uh, char char Charlie and just tie voluntary stuttering into desensitization. I'm glad you did, Pam. And um, I thought of another really important ally in this process, and that can be your speech pathologist. Mm. Um, so I would say that in the process of finding a speech pathologist, you want to find somebody who's got some experience working with stuttering. Um, but absolutely, a speech pathologist can help you um, outline your course of disclosure. Yeah, that's a good point. And we have a couple of speech pathologists in the, in the, in the, in the session today. And we're just about ready to, um, uh, stop sharing the screen and go into some Q and A. But Charlie, real quick question. Um, does an effective speech language patho pathologist, um, who works with people who stutter, do they have to stutter too? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, absolutely. Um, so letting yourself stutter for someone who's covert is extremely difficult. And it's also part of the process of recovery. And so depending on where we are in the therapy process, if there's a big step to take that involves stuttering openly, um, either on the phone or in public face to face, once we get past the pandemic, um, I always go first. I stutter first. Um, if I'm working with a graduate student, the graduate student gets to go next. And then if the person that we're working with is comfortable, 
it's their turn. And at any point, we can jump back in and do it too. But I think what I was getting at, um, um, and not to put you on the spot, but does the SLP who is fluent, does that fluent SLP um, have the same compassion and ability to help a person who stutters? That's a great question. They certainly can, but um, from my perspective, um, one of the reasons that I found the NSA was because way back in 2000, when I was just beginning my career working with stuttering, ah, 20 I realized, years. <laughs> yes, I realized early on that um, that they needed the people I was working with needed to hear from other people who had taken that leap of faith um, because it, it wasn't as legitimate coming from me because I haven't been there. And so I very early on um, got connected with people locally and started the Columbia chapter of the NSA. And um, I have always uh, made referring to that group as part of my treatment with older kids and adults. Mm. Wonderful. Well, thank you for share, share, sharing that, uh, Charlie, and for allowing me to put you on the spot for, for, for a moment. Um, we are going to jump into the second half of our webinar where we want to hear from you guys. So we, we want to, we want to open it up and see if anybody has, um, uh, questions, comments, feedback. We've got some starter questions, um, listed here, but I'm going to remove the slides so that, um, we can, we can kind of see each other a little bit better. And it's exactly 1.30. So we have timed this well. We wanted to have about 25 minutes or so to, um, do some sharing. So, um, and I'm looking right now. That is quite full, by the way. Uh, yes, it is. This is really wonderful. Um, yeah. We have uh, 79 participants, which I think is one of the biggest turnouts that we've had so far for a live web webinar. And I see that the chat box is rolling. There's 94 comments in 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 there. So. Um, we want to take some quest questions. Um, would anybody like to raise their hand and verbally ask a question, or are people comfortable uh, just uh, writing in the chat 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 box? So I'm going to read something out of the chat box, Pam. Okay. Um, uh, Jonah says that. Um, he came out with his stuttering at work a few years ago, but he still feels the imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, and he still feels the penalty of that, that is associated with that. Um, Jonah, I hope you are connected with others locally in a chapter. Um, I think that talking with them would be a great way to, to work on that a little bit. Um, Jamie says that it sort of depends on where you sit in the chart, the higher up. Uh, as he moved higher up, it was easier to require others to deal, to force others to deal with his stuttering. Um, let's see. Any hand raises yet? Anybody want to jump in? I'm trying to scan the chat, the, the, the chat box. Um, and there is, um, Quite a, quite a quite a few here. Um, Jacob Bongers, if you're still in, um, would you share your thought about um, stuttering changing? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, thank you. <laughs> so I'm a, <laughs> uh, so I'm 31 right now, um, and I I feel that uh, right now when when I stutter. I, I move. So I, I try to sort of, um, physically shake to sort of say the word. And I feel like that was not something that I did as a kid. Um, I, I feel like I would, um, elongate my 
my words and repeat. Um, but now I feel like I, I try to avoid by just doing a block and just waiting until I, I say the word. So I, I, I think it's as a result of a sort of mental shift where, um, you know, it's, <laughs> it's still a concern of mine. And I, I just, I would, I would much rather block and prevent people from hearing that I stutter, um, by doing that as opposed to, um, elongating words and, and so forth. Um, so I just, I just wanted to ask if anybody else had, had experienced a, a change of that nature. That's interesting, Jacob. So um, rather than have a re re repetition or a prolongation, you'd rather just wait it out silently. Okay. That's exactly right. And, and, and again, I, I like, I shake, like I, I sort of, I, I'm trying to say the word and I'm just, but I'm not letting myself say anything until the word comes out and I, um, it's, I've done this in, in, in talks and, and, and especially on phone calls, um, where, you know, I, I, I feel like I should feel safer. They can't see me. And yet I still block and I, I'm physically trying to sort of bring the word out. Um, and it's just, it's never, it, it's never been like this, you know? So this is something that's, um, that's manifested over the past couple of years. So, so what happens if you try to let yourself, uh, stutter in a different form? I, I rarely do it. Um, I, I feel like if it's not working, um, what I do is I will, I will look away and I'll, I'll, I'll feign, um, that I'm thinking about something to basically buy myself more time. Um, but I feel like there's a real, there's a, there's a mental, there's a mental block. There's a, there's a kind of mental resistance to stuttering in a non-blocking form. Um, yeah. That's because you haven't done it in a long time. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely it. It's definitely and it. Is that something that you are you at a point where you <sighs> would like to be able to stutter in other forms, or are you just content going on like this? It's certainly it's it's certainly been a journey, and I would say right now uh, I'm to be very very frank, I'm at a very very low point uh, right now, um, and I am searching for therapy and sort of alternative methods because this is this is not sustainable um and i do want to i do want to uh reach that goal reach the point that that you pointed out um i i do want to feel comfortable doing that again um and i'm just not i'm just not right now i'm in the academic world you know there's a lot of pressure on how you speak and um i know of just a few people that are doing this career that that do stutter openly um and so it's it's sort of there's a big part of me that just wants to be part of the group that that is fluent and that's certainly contributed to me being in this state um, and in fact, in my sort of low state now, um, because again, it's a sort of uphill battle. <clears throat> so first, I really want to thank you for sharing that because I, I'm quite certain that there are other people in with us here today who are in a similar situation as you are. For sure. Um, did I understand that you would like to be more like colleagues who stutter openly i think so i 
Um, we envy that freedom a little bit. Yeah, I mean that's that's what I want um, more than anything is to is to just you know feel free and to not um, and to sort of uh, not self hate yeah. um, and to just be kind kinder to myself uh, both when I speak and um, after I speak because uh, it's it's the after I speak it's that point where. I'm I'm just really judgmental, really really hard on myself. Um, I'm a perfectionist, you know, and it's oh, yeah. just uh, it's <laughs> very very difficult. It's very I mean again it's 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 very very tough. So I I I want to break free from this, and I want to feel comfortable with my stutter, um, and I just want to feel okay in my own skin yeah around others you know that um in a culture that to be frank really puts a lot of stock in how you sound Mm -hmm. how you come across and it's just not common to see people like me in this world which again makes it that much harder Mm -hmm. so i want to feel okay being quote unquote different and I've had a really hard time with that because uh, for a big part of my life, I've just wanted to be part of the crowd. I just want to be, you know, like everybody else, but I can't, you know, it's, it's sort of, it's the, it's the in, involuntary nature of this mm-hmm. that makes it really, really difficult. Jacob, um, I would, I, if I can, I would just like to uh, mention two things. Um, I want to just put the word yet yeah. to what you just said. Because it's not like you are never going to be able to do this. It's just that you have not found that way yet. Right. Also, Frank made a comment in the chat, chat, chat box, um, realizing that stuttering isn't his fault has helped him to desensitize and disclose. And I think that that is prob- prob- probably one of the most affirming ways to approach approach stuttering you know this is what you get i'm different and i'm okay okay with it and i think maybe you know embracing that might help you get to that point that you really want to be at and i was going to piggyback on that um so you mentioned being a perfectionist. There's a large body of research on stuttering and perfectionism, and it okay. leans heavily towards the, the covert realm. Yeah. Um, so you need to get connected with people who stutter. And the more you do that, the more you'll find people who stutter who are excellent communicators. And one of the best I know is my co-presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Char- Char- Charlie. And I also want to mention, Jacob, you and I first met at a regional NSA conference. That's right. <laughs> um, I think it was <laughs> yeah. in Anaheim. That's right. Um, That's so, right. It was the first time. Yeah. So just <laughs> being there was oh, a, step, a step you took to life changing. To, yes, you just said Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Life changing. I, I mean, in, in so many ways, like I, I truly, it was the first time in, you know, first time ever, perhaps where I truly felt like I was myself, like I wasn't pretending, I, I wasn't acting, I, I, I was, I was truly myself and it, it felt, it just, it, it just felt uh, amazing. Absolutely amazing. So you need to try to bring yourself back to yes. those feel feelings that 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 you had then. Absolutely, it was a small conference, so there was only you know about a hundred of us there, and that's right. <laughs> um, but that still is very empowering because Absolutely. you kind of get to know everybody in a smaller group, and um, you know we all embraced you. So now you have to embrace you. <laughs> Thank you so. Um, I mean, and that's the goal, right? I mean, I that's that is what I want to do. I just want to bring that self to the public space. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be just comfortable in 
in the private space. I right. want to be comfortable in the public space. You know, that's that's my main goal. And I and I feel like that's just that's the main challenge, you know. Um absolutely. Well, well you're, you're on your way. Five people right now. Yeah, I would just yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exact kind of same thought can't I can't believe this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks Thankfully, for letting yeah. us put you on the spot. Jacob. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so I'll much. Make a comment. Yes, please. So, hi, I'm, my name is Tracy Wallace. I'm a person who stutters, and uh, I used to be covert, Jacob, so I completely can relate to everything that you're saying, and I just actually privately messaged you, so hopefully you'll call me. <laughs> um, this is a really tough journey. Let me be real clear. It's a very tough journey, and um, it's going to take a while. And so if you're w- willing to put in the work to really explore yourself, and your your stutter and be able to move from the point where you are. Keep in mind, everything you've been doing all of this time has gotten you to where you are and you don't like the space that you're in right now. So the reality is you're going to have to make some changes, right? Mm -hmm. And changes come in three different ways. You can change the way you think about stuttering. You can change what you do with stuttering. You can change how you feel about stuttering but you've got to start somewhere. And so you, it sounds like you're really in this battle between wanting to be covert and wanting to be overt or wanting to be fluent and all this kind of stuff. And so the, the reality of all of this is most of us value fluency way too much. Yeah. Being fluent is not what's important right here. And like Charlie what was saying and Pam, being an excellent communicator is what's really, really important. And so when you really put fluency in its right place, you're, you're able to begin to start to move through this, th- this journey. And so definitely give me a call um, so we can chat because I know where you are. It's a scary place. It is a dark place and you feel like you're by yourself and you feel held back and you've got so much to share with the world. I don't even know you, but I know you've got a lot to share with the world. And so we, we, we want to hear you, but you've got a lot of work to do on your own to get there and you will get there. Like Pam was saying, you will get there. And it's just a matter of uh, talking to other people, like, like, like everybody is saying and getting to know folks and seeing what other people have done. Cause what works for you may not work for me, but at least you'll have some options and you'll try. And we're all here as a family to support you in whatever that path is. So I'm excited that you're a part of this meeting and everyone else. And I'll put my, phone number out to everybody because I don't care who calls me. If I'm asleep, I'm asleep. <laughs> but I'll be happy to, to to share whatever I've learned um, you know, in my course of, of of living as a person who stutters and actually being in a place right now where I don't think about stuttering. I don't hate my stuttering. I don't worry about stuttering, but I still stutter all the time. It doesn't matter to me. It doesn't change my day or how I feel about myself. And everybody knows it and they're sick of hearing me talk about it. But guess what? I was hiding it for half of my life and I'm never going back there again. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tracy. Jacob, could you just share with everybody what your profession is? (laughs) Sure. Um, cool. I'm an archaeologist (laughs) and I've been, um, I've been working in Peru for, about 10 years. Um, and I'm right now a postdoc, uh, based in, in Norwich, which is about, um, about 90 minutes from London. Yeah. So you're having opportunities for, um, global, uh, advertising and disclosure. So, um, That's absolutely right. Yeah. I just, I just <laughs> think it's really neat that we all are in so many different professions, which just goes to show that stutter, stutter, stuttering really does not have, have, have to limit you know, our lives and our career choice choices. Um, I want to mention something real quick also from the chat that Kevin, I'll probably get your name wrong, Kevin, Kevin Onorato um, is saying that he's finding himself stuttering more in all of the virtual meet, meet, meetings that we have instead of in person. Um, Kevin, if you're on here, would you, would you like to just share a a tiny bit about that comment? 
Yeah, sure. So um, previously when working in in an office, like I felt like I was comfortable with my stuttering and my colleagues knew that I stuttered and I was able to manage it well. Um, but then ever since COVID happened and we're all working from home now and we're using Zoom and the phone a lot more, um, I guess I feel like because I'm not getting that like in-person interaction, like where they have to rely on my voice only and not my movements or my body language, um, stuttering more. So I guess I'm just like trying to accept that, like, even if I do stutter more, it's still okay, but it's something that I'm working on because I do have days where like I beat myself up about it. Like, Oh, how can I be a professional and stutter and like have a hard time getting my, my words out. Um, so that's like a constant battle that I'm having with myself, but I feel like I definitely have to adapt to it because nobody knows when this pandemic is going to end and when we're going to be back in the office. Um, so I just wanted to kind of share that and like know if anybody else was having that happen to them when like you used to work in an office in person and now you're at home, if you're finding that you're stuttering more or less or if it's the same. Thank you, Kevin. Others want to chime, a chime, a chime in there with that thought. Yes, if I, I could. Um, my name is Daniel Fleischman, and um, I I must say that this is the most helpful. Um, webinar, um, ever, um, Jacob, I am right where you are. Um, I, I, I am backwards. I used to be accepting of my stutter, but five years ago, I like don't know what happened, and I like got into like a funk, and I like kept avoiding it, and it's like I already experience on some level what freedom is and I love it and now I've been deprived five years and I, and um I, I, I am in graduate school for psychoanalysis um so, so um I just I am I am it, it's my uh first week as a therapist at an intern ship and I am um, scared and I'm looking to become free. That is my goal. Well, Daniel, first off, congratulations um, for, for, for your, for your honesty here. I think a lot of people can, can, can relate to the fear. I mean, there's so much, Fear, fear, fear we have of 
how we're being perceived, how we're being being judged by, you know, by society, society in general and in the workplace with our client clients specifically. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how well we'll answer, um, or comment your, uh, your, your, um, thoughts here because we only have a few minutes left, but are there any other social workers or therapists or psychologists, um, on, on, on today that might give Daniel a quick shot in the arm? <laughs> So I do know Daniel of quite um, uh, quite a few um, people that are um, who stutter and that are psycho psycho psy, psychologist. Um, where are you located? Um, I am in Chicago, Illinois. Okay, I don't know anybody specifically from that area, but I do know. Um, Gina Davis and Nora O'Connor, who are in Cal Cal California, um, who are both therapists who stutter, and um, they would be really good pe people to to um, hook 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 you up with. So, if you don't mind, perhaps put your email address in the chat, sure. and I will connect you with them. Um, we only have a few minutes left, but I wanted to ask uh, John Hendrickson, who's on, who wrote that amazing art art article about Joe Biden and stuttering. Um, I think that we right now are in an explosion of stutter stuttering in the news and in the media. There's a lot go going on, from Joe Biden to Braden Harrington, who made that wonderfully empowering two minute speech at the democratic national convention. I mean, it was just that brought stuttering out into the open, like probably nothing else has, but John, um, John Hendrickson, if you don't mind, would you just share, uh, really quickly why you chose to write the article that you did? I can't tell if he's still on or not. <laughs> uh, he's probably not. So I'm going to jump in real quick and say yeah. that my, my email is in the chat. If anybody has any questions, I will try to get you connected to an answer if I'm unable to answer it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to thank everybody for the great turnout today. Um, if this is your first foray into uh, the world of stuttering, I hope it's not your last. There are a lot. Of great resources out there. Um, the NSA is loaded. You want to tell them about what's coming up, Pam? Yes, yes. And I also see we're going to make the chat transcript um, available for every everybody as well um, as this video recording. We should have this out to everybody at the end of the week because the chat box here is rich. There yeah. is a lot happening there. Um, um, so you know, the questions and the comments, and there's some links here that I see people are posting to, um, other, um, media out, 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 outlets that have embraced this explosion of stuttering too. But, um, let me I just, wanna, uh, mm -hmm. I want to, uh, really quickly, uh, you know, we talked about how there are some wonderful communicators who stutter. Taylor made the great comment that there are also plenty of lousy communicators who don't. <laughs> there are, there are. So with our closing slide, I just want to point everybody to um, westutter.org slash career success. That is where you can find previous webinars archived you can register for our next webinar coming up at the end of October, um, Unpacking Career Barriers to Success, um, uh, that is going to be held by um, Carl Coffey, who's on the call here today, and Jonathan Laz Laz Lazenby. But also... Um, 
you know, if, 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 if you're not connecting with all of the NSA virtual things that are happening right now, you really, you really need to take a look at westutter.org and see every, 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 everything that is avail, avail, available. Um, because like I said, there's an explosion of resources right now for, for stuttering. Um, and there continues to be sustained interest, um, which is amazing. And this, this webinar at 72 participants, um, live here is the best turnout that we've had so far. So this was an important conversation. Um, please consider, um, all the other ways that you can 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 get involved, and I just want to say thank you to my co-presenter Char, Char, Charlie. Thank you for um, you know sharing this experience with me. Obviously, this is pretty important. Thank you, Pam. It's always a joy to work with you. <laughs> so um, we if er, if everybody wants to unmute themselves and just say goodbye to everybody because we are going to end the mo the meeting in just a second but uh you know just uh you know coming huh yeah all at once everybody just you know hey <laughs> bye bye, bye. bye. So bye. <laughs> stay safe <thank> <laughs>